y'all what's going on it's your girl dash here with another video for y'all today we're finally gonna do a makeup tutorial this is something that is frequently asked about and is how do you achieve your go-to look that my friends have started to call the classic dash b and it just incorporates a lot of glow a lot of hydration and a lot of nude because i love a good kim k-esque a good j-lo-esque mario-esque scott barnes-esque kind of look i love all things nude and glow and just you but more glam that's my favorite kind of look is you but more glam and this this look gives that to me so i hope you guys are able to pick up a few tips and tricks from my techniques and i uh, hope you guys enjoy okay so we're just gonna jump right into it right so first thing i like to do um i start with brows first right so my skin's already prepped if we look remember i told y'all my skin look what before I apply my foundation. So I could use a little more, to be very honest with you. One of my favorite products to drench my skin and just make sure she's hydrated and supple before I go in and beat my face is the Vitamin Nectar Antioxidant Glow Water. It's a face mist. Um, it is, is she a, oh no, glow water. Okay, I thought she was marketed as a setting mist. Excuse me, but no, she's a glow water, which means she's just gonna give your skin mm, a beautiful, beautiful radiant glow. I like to take my beauty blender and just Absorb any excess product, really press this into my skin. Get her in there. So this is this is what you want to achieve before. Look, by the way, for those who think that I don't go through it, child, look. Look at what happens. My hormones go wild just like all of y'all. Now my skin is doing amazing in the center of my face. This luminosity, oh my God. Did my weekly facial this morning. She look radiant, girl. Mm hmm. That's what you want. See, if my skin didn't have that little slip, my skin wasn't a little luminous like this. If I didn't have that little glow in my nose that y'all are convinced is oil, but really it's just luminosity because you're young, <laughs> then my foundation would look very dry. Even if you're wearing a super matte foundation, even if you are oily, make sure you hydrate and then proceed with your foundation. It'll soften it up, make it look a lot more hydrating, a lot more natural. So today I'm feeling real extra. So I'm gonna take some of the Cover FX Power Play Foundation in a shade G50, she a full coverage. And I'm gonna take a little bit of the nude sticks tint to cover in the shade number four, cause she's um, a sheer coverage, but she has um, a really nice luminous tint, luminous finish, excuse me, that I want, but I still want Cover FX Power Play coverage, if you know what I mean. So I have the product on the back of my hand. I'm gonna pick it up with my beauty blender and start to dab her in the center of my face and work my way out. So the Cover FX foundation has a very nice matte finish. I don't really care for being matte. So that's why I like to manipulate it with an oil. I just love the longevity of that foundation. It's beautiful. The, um, and see, it's already giving us just a really nice airbrushed, even base. I focus the foundation on the center of my face first. That's your focal point. That's the first area that people are gonna, you know, really like notice when they look at your face as the center of your face. Especially if you take a photo or if you're talking to someone directly, right? So, oh, notifications. Fox News, I'm tired of hearing about you. Shut up. I'm tired of CNN, I'm tired of Fox News, I'm tired of all of y'all, leave me alone. It's the only notifications I get on my phone these days. I'm paying for the news. <laughs> but, um, no, yeah. I like the luminosity of the nude sticks tinted cover, so I like just mixing them together because they just create magic together. They look like one big, beautiful, satin finished luminous foundation, and I love it. So once I get the coverage where I want to in the center of my face, since that is your focal point, right? Then I can go ahead and cover other areas. Since my skin is pretty even for the most part, this just helps me understand that I don't need a lot. You know, it helps me not overdo it either. Um, you'll see me go back in and pick up product, go back in and pick up product, just because just I don't want to waste, number one. You know what I'm saying? And because I don't want to waste, I'd rather keep going and picking up product a thousand times than wasting it all at once. Now I'm creating the coverage where I need it, which is these areas right here. Usually leave my forehead for last. It's a thing, I don't know why. Okay. Now, when I'm applying my foundation, there are some steps that I take that are kind of redundant, <laughs> like taking the setting mist and spraying it all over my face again, just to ensure that I have that luminosity that I want. This is what I do to get that glow. Whatever you do to your skin before you apply everything else is going to reflect at the end, so. 
press that into my skin the same way I did beforehand before I applied my foundation. And this is a good way to, if you ever feel like your skin is just feeling super dry, textured, or like you're not getting the luminous cover, the luminous finish that you want, just go in with your setting spray. Mm -hmm. Luminous setting spray from Morphe is a great option for this too. I just am a big fan of this, just for this portion, which is really just making my skin look dewy. For setting, I like the Morphe sprays. For concealer today, I'm gonna go in with the Cover FX Power Play Concealer in the shade G Medium 1. She gonna be a little lighter. Just take. Before I do that, I'm gonna take a little bit of my Nude Sticks Tinted Cover because she's luminous and hydrating. Cover FX Power Play Concealer is also very luminous and hydrating. However, what I want here is to even out my under eye area, right? before I brighten, before I conceal, before I highlight. Well, I'm concealing with this, but before I highlight, I wanna go in with a little bit of a, a tone that is close to my complexion or my complexion, just to ensure that when I go in with a lighter shade of concealer, sis don't look ashy. Cause you look real casket ready if you just go in with a whole bunch of light ass concealer and you don't neutralize your under eye. So if you ever find that you're trying to do the highlight method but it doesn't work for you because it looks too ashy or the colors are just not looking right, you cannot go lighter with your concealer without neutralizing your under eye area first unless you have like the most perfect skin, the most perfect under eye ever. You know what I'm saying? Like you need some underneath it and that could be your foundation. A and I mean the tiniest bit though cause you don't want to sit here and gunk up the product. That's why I don't like to do too much. That's why I like to use this formula cause it's very lightweight underneath my eyes, because then when I go in with my highlight shade, it won't gunk up and crease, feel me? Because that's what causes creasing is all the uh, um, overabundance of product. Now with the Cover FX Power Play Concealer, she is full coverage, so a little bit goes a very long way, okay? I don't place her directly underneath my lash line, because if I do that, what's gonna happen is that the product, again, is gonna get bunched up, and you wanna give yourself space to blend. Okay, because when you put on an eye cream, they always say be very delicate and place it around your orbital bone and not directly underneath your lash line. Because if you go ahead and take your eye cream and put it underneath under there, you need to give that moisture space to travel. And where's it gonna go in your eyeballs? Same thing with your concealer, where you gonna blend in your eyeballs? No, so give yourself some space because that's just gonna make it look a lot smoother and it's gonna set you up for success for later on when you are uh, setting, whether you're baking or if you're using a lot of powder in general, I use I do use a lot of powder, but because I use a lot of powder, my formulas A, have to be hydrating, and B, less is more, they cannot be over applied because they have great coverage. The Cover FX Power Play Concealer has coverage like, pfft, girl, it's so thin, and it has amazing coverage. So a little bit goes a long way. Mm -hmm. And it's hydrating too. So the fact that it's hydrating, I can build her up and she won't ever be like, OD, you know what I'm saying? Like she won't be super dry like some concealers can be. And even when I apply her like this with the applicator, I do so in a way that kind of shears it out, you know what I'm saying? I like to take off the excess product. I don't really have excess product on the applicator. And then with the pointy edge of my beauty blender, just go ahead and blend her in. Drag her out so as to really highlight and lift those features. I'm very delicate when I use my beauty blender. I mean, around the face, I put a lot of um, pressure underneath the eyes, you know, moderate pressure. You don't have to sit here and like, oh. <laughs> beat yourself to death. Okay. Now for contour, for contour, I've really been into the Huda Beauty Tan Tour, excuse me. Really been into the Huda Beauty Tan Tours. They're so buttery, so creamy. They blend on the skin like a dream. It's really hard to sometimes to find a good um, contour product that's the right color, you know, the appropriate color. will sit well on the skin. Um, I'm gonna use the, which brush I use did I? I'm gonna use the Real Techniques 221 brush. And I use the shade Light in the Huda Beauty Tan Tour. And I like to use a synthetic brush for this. This one, it doesn't say exactly what it's a complete coverage brush. So this is gonna make sure that you get the most out of your product. So to measure where you're gonna apply your contour, I already have um, defined cheekbones, but if I go where this part is here of my ear and I press, y'all see the way my finger deepens a little bit in there and deepens further as I go along. That's what helps you identify where your cheekbone is. So when your finger sinks in there, 
The brushes, that's why it's important. We spoke about tools in our first video. We really wanna make sure our brushes are small enough to fit in these areas. So I know that then I could take this brush and position this product right there where I had my finger and then just blend her out. Yeah, the first time I tried the Huda Beauty Tantor, I was like, oh, okay. She blends like a dream. I'm here for her. So I go back and forth between my Beauty Blender and that brush. I use the brush mainly for uh, placement and the Beauty Blender to blend her out. Because I love me a Beauty Blender. I love me some control over my product and ensuring that we have absorbed any excess because we want to look smooth. Like a baby's butt. For the forehead, it's very important that, for well, for me, it's very important that you connect. So I notice some people when they do the makeup, they do the contour here, they don't really connect down to the um, uh, temples. I think it's really important for me to connect it. Uh, being the fact, well, the fact that I have no hair, you know, my face is front and center. So I really make, need to make sure that I just cover all my bases. So I have no patches, everything looks nice and seamless. Skin. See how easy it is to move this product around. Also, take into account my skin is still very luminous from our prep earlier and from misting ourselves with that vitamin nectar mist. And this is a matte foundation we're working with. So just to put it in perspective, matte foundation mixed with tinted cover. That's why hydration is so important. It makes the products that you apply on your skin a lot easier to blend. It makes your life a lot easier, period. So I like to take a small mirror and just take a look at my under eye. And this is why I love a hydrating concealer because anything that would have been super dry, I would have been just like dry and creasing by now and mad. <laughs> but I can easily take my beauty blender and just smooth her out. Anything that needs to be smoothed out, already pretty smooth for the most part. It's beautiful underneath my eyes right now. You can, I can tell when something's just not gonna look right. It's just gonna be just dry and textured. I'm gonna go ahead and set with a Maybelline Fit Me Loose Translucent Powder. So for baking, right? I do like to bake. I don't like to do it with the Beauty Blender though. I like to do it with the brush. My favorite brush to do it with is the Real Techniques 402 Setting Brush that I also like to use for highlights sometimes. I got powder all over my hands, excuse me. So I do like to pick up an abundance of powder, right? But not like OD. I don't sit here and lay it on there and then brush it off, no. I go ahead and blend it all in as we go along. Really, really putting emphasis on that inner corner, very lightly. The way that I'm doing this, the motion underneath my eyes is like very airbrushed almost, like a feather. To really get in those fine lines because my fine lines are stubborn. We all have fine lines, they're natural. So that's what the powder does. It helps to just set those under eyes, fine lines any lap lines you may have as well. But this is why it's important to hydrate as much as possible and use hydrating formulas because the more you hydrate, the more powder you can use. But when you apply that powder, because you're using a lot, and I know I use a lot, if I were to not hydrate my skin before I apply this powder in this buffing motion, girl, I would look so textured. It doesn't matter how pretty your skin is. Dryness is always gonna enhance texture. It's one, either gonna lift the texture that's already on your skin or two, create its own texture with the powder. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Very important for me to set this area. And I use a little extra powder in this area because this is where I get my, my wax. So that area can be a little porous. Snatched, but like myself. <laughs> I don't really have an issue with lap lines, but if you do, just take and press like so. So I have my T-zone covered. I take my Real Techniques number 400 brush, and I'm gonna take a little bit of this MAC Mineralized Skin Finish in the shade Medium Tan. And I'm just gonna lightly go over any areas where I powdered, and areas that I didn't powder to kind of just set. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Let me make sure to set the whole face. And now to create further dimension for my contour, I'm just gonna take a clean, this is the expert face brush from Real Techniques. She's clean, I'm just taking her to blend things out. I'm gonna take the Morphe E48 brush and I'm also gonna take the Lara Geller foundation powder in the shade Deep. And this has been my contour shade for like the past three months. I really focus this in right underneath that hollow right there. Remember what I said about um, in our brushes video, small brushes are gonna set you up for success because they just fit in those areas that you really wanna define more than others. And for me, the cheekbones is one of those areas. Mm -hmm. You wanna be very delicate with it, take your time, you know what I'm saying? And kind of blend as you go along, but you're really patting. And in the forehead, I just tap it in as close to the hairline as possible. And this part I keep um, limited mainly to just the sides of my forehead here. Now take that same Real Techniques brush that I use to apply that foundation powder, that MAC Mint Mineralized Skin Finish, and I'm just gonna lightly blend out what we've applied so as to not lose the structure, right? But so that she don't look dusty or muddy. I love these Real Techniques brush because literally the pressure that I'm using on the brush, it looks like I'm moving my hand quick, but it's like the most airbrushed little motion that I'm doing. And what it does is it's just so soft and it just diffuses the product. You know, it doesn't lift it, it doesn't move it. It just lightly diffuses the product. And that's what I love because I spend the majority of my time doing my makeup blending. Cause when in doubt, you got blended out. You know what I'm saying? If you feel like it could be blended out more, blend it out more. I don't care. Take your time. It's all about patience. If you don't have time to do it, don't do it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There are a lot more. Um, you'll see. I will show you guys different variations of how to create uh, looks like these that are very simple. This is just what I like to do when I'm beating my face. Notice too, when I'm blending into my contour, always do so in an upward motion because by doing so in an upward motion, you're creating more of that lifting um, effect. By blending downwards, what you're gonna do is not see any of the structure that you're trying to build. So, yeah. And I'm gonna go ahead and add the finishing touches to the complexion later because complexion is definitely not done. But I don't really complete her to the T until I finish everything else because down to the highlight, it needs to be finessed in the dash way. So y'all can see. So now I'm going with my eyebrows. For my eyebrows, I like to go in with my concealer first and then I like to go in with my brow product. The reason being, I like my brows to look snatched like I just left the shop, like I just got them threaded. I don't trust nobody, so I haven't been to a shop in years. I do them myself. So the way that I do it is I like to get a flat, brush them nice and stiff, not too stiff, not too flexible. This one's from Morphe. This came in a set um, purchased at Ulta. And I like to pick up some product on this nice flat brush. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut my brow and just clean her up. Make her look like she just got waxed or tweezed. Let's see. Really take your time. Can you see? Yes, you can, okay. Take your time and concentrate. in the same shape as your arch. It helps to do this if your brows are already tweezed. I like to take a beauty supply razor, the same ones. These are the ones I used to shave my face, by the way. I wanted to show you guys uh, for reference what I used to shave my face. These cost like $1.99 at the beauty supply. I pick up like full five for the week and I'm good for the next three. But um, yeah, I like to just clean up my brow with these two to remove any excess hairs so that when I go ahead and do this technique, my brow is nice and clean. 
We're not making our brow any thicker, any thinner. We're just cleaning it up. That's why it's important to have patience. People have um, a hard time with brows sometimes because they wish that it could be as easy as sitting down here and being like, whoop, whoop, no sis. Take your time, especially if you're a beginner. You know, you really want to make sure to be patient with it. If you want it to come out good, take your time. Not every conceal, not every brow requires a concealer too. This is a technique I love to do for myself and I love to do it on everybody, um, but not, not everybody, excuse me. I realize that not everybody needs a concealed brow. Some people have such beautiful eyebrows that it just, oof, completes the look right by itself. But for me, having that clean cut brow just it, it it does it it does it for me okay now that's my brush picking up this morphe m524 brush and i'm just gonna go ahead now and buff this along the edges but not too much. So that's the trick here with the brows, right? You don't want to buff. Notice my my brush is slightly beneath where that concealer is originally placed and it's not right directly above it. That's because I want to make sure that I still have the dimension in my brow. If I go ahead and go directly on that line, it's going to take away that shape because y'all see bitch, bad bitch brow, basic bitch brow, bad bitch brow, basic bitch brow. We like the bad bitch brow. And this is a technique I like to do even when I'm not wearing makeup like that because honestly, like I said, it makes you look like you just got threaded without going to the shop and trusting anybody with your life, <laughs> you know? So it's great. And also this technique for me helps me identify that my brow already looks pretty full, right? Like there are just some areas that she can be filled in at, but she look good, she look good. She doesn't need a whole lot. Honestly, if I wanted to go in with carved out before I go on with, um, my pencil, I'm just gonna take whatever's left over of the concealer on the back of my hand, and I'm actually gonna pop that all on my lid. All the way into my brow bone, using a lighter shade, which usually, uh, more often than not, ends up being my concealer. It just um, helps for colors to appear a lot more vibrant and help you get a nicer contrast. I like to take my setting powder because my eyes crease like a motherfucker. I'm gonna go ahead and just go on. Bake my eyelids in a similar fashion and buff that um, translucent powder in, in a similar fashion to um, the way that I do on my skin, on my face. for my transition i usually always go in with a bronzer along my crease as a transition shade to create dimension you know you always want to make sure you go in with a transition shade because if you don't it can derail the entire operation and when you're blending your eyeshadow right this is a very simple eyeshadow y'all see how i'm like it looks like i'm doing it really really fast and that's just because the brush is ever so lightly gliding along my crease and i'm slightly guiding it with my wrist i'm not putting a lot of pressure like if you guys see it's very light when i'm doing my client's makeup they're like i barely feel the brush on my lid and it's like that's the way it should be the shadow should never be so hard to blend that you have to sit here and jam the brush on your eye. Like, wait, like, no, I'm sorry. My eyes are very sensitive. They can water easily. So it's like, as it is, I already have to be very delicate. So I just have that light, like I'm very light-handed by nature when it comes to myself and other people. I'm gonna go into the shade Ginger from the Jackie Ina palette. And she's gonna go along my outer corner and halfway into my crease. The way you hold the brush is also very important. So I try my best to hold the brush at the end because that's where you're applying the least amount of pressure. And also look at the perspective in which I'm applying my eyeshadow. Y'all don't see me holding the um, mirror like this because this is kind of productive to what I'm trying to achieve, the dimension that I want to create in my eyes. When I'm holding the mirror down, that's why handheld mirrors are always going to be the winners. Those vanity mirror impression mirrors, $400, they real cute, but just standing there, they cute to look at yourself in, but not really to help you out. You need a handheld mirror. That's why palettes come with their own mirrors because makeup is all about perspective. You want to make sure that you're angling it, right? Like so, 
kind of like you're looking down at yourself. By looking down at yourself, it makes it a lot easier for you to identify where your crease is, where you're gonna apply that shadow. For me, I like to take the edge of the brush and just feel out where it sinks. Where it sinks, see that's my crease right there. That's how I know that, Boop. that's where my brush gotta go. Kind of like the same thing I was teaching you guys earlier about like really feeling into the hollow of your cheeks to feel where that crevice is where you gotta uh, position that product. Same thing, with your eyeshadow, it's all about product placement. And the number one thing that's gonna set you up for success is finding that crease and starting to build that dimension along that crease. So shade Ginger. Also, the brushes that we use are gonna set us up for success. So make sure that she's nice and big and fluffy. This brush doesn't have a name because she's old and she's been with me for the past three years because she's a real one. Now I'm gonna take this Morphe brush from that set earlier that I got from Ulta that I mentioned. And I'm gonna go into the shade Credit from the Jackie Ina palette. Always tap off your excess. You see me doing this a lot. That's why my brushes that make it three, four years, they real ones, cause I be beating up my brushes just to get that excess off. And now this we're working along the outer corner. Mm-hmm, start to see that dimension being built. And I focus this on the outer corner. I love Anastasia palettes. Anastasia makes some of my favorite eyeshadows, I will say. I think Anastasia and Juvia's Place are my favorite eyeshadow palettes because they are, well, number one, Juvia's Place is super, super affordable. And Anastasia, the quality is great. I think her palettes hit every time. Going back into my big fluffy blending brush and I'm actually gonna go back into that bronzer. Just softens things up. So along the edges, I focus a lot on the placement and then I focus on the blending of the edges later on. Um, because I'm very light handed, it already isn't super, super harsh and intense. But when you are wanting to blend out any edges, just very lightly go along the edge with your transition shade and that'll help to diffuse everything very nicely. So you have no harsh lines, girl. Now I'm gonna pick up with this Morphe brush, the Morphe M524. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of that bronzer and pack her on my lid. This color, I apply it towards the center and lightly blend with that outer corner color because I don't wanna take that away. I don't wanna blend it all the way and make it look ashy, you know? So really very delicately. Go ahead, eyes don't have to be so, so difficult, you know, so long as you're patient and taking your time. I love neutral tones, they're my absolute favorite for every day, when in doubt, these are the colors that'll never fail you because they go with absolutely everything. <laughs> I think I've worn this variation, a variation of this look with like almost every outfit that I own, like every day. I'm gonna use the Stila Stay All Day Liquid Liner and I'm only gonna use this along my lash line. So when I'm applying lashes, I love to do a liner along the lash line. Not necessarily a wing liner, just something to ensure that when I apply my lashes, they look natural and blend it in with my natural lashes. Cause I mean, nobody's stupid. They still know you're wearing a lash, right? But they just don't want it to be, just don't want it to be apparent. The eyes. So I'm holding this, positioning this color right up top and with a little extra pressure than I would normally since this is a synthetic brush. I'm just going ahead and packing that color in. Hmm, see how that smokes out her eyes a lot more? Now, on the bottom lash line, I'm gonna pick up my e.l.f. shader brush, 
and this is gonna be, let me see which color we're gonna do. I'm actually gonna do ginger on my bottom lash line. And the ginger on my bottom lash line. And then I'm gonna go in with credit, that darker shade. I love using this brush because it's nice and domed. This is the e.l.f. shader brush. It's fluffy enough to blend the outer corner, I mean the bottom um, lash line, but it's not like super stiff, which can irritate the bottom lash line for me. So I have to be very particular about the brushes that I use on my bottom lash line. I just make sure that they're not too thin, right? Also nice and flexible. I'm gonna use the shade Credit. And pop this on my outermost part of my lash line. That's cute. For me, it opens up my eye more than putting it all over. That just closes it out for me. My eyes are low <laughs> by nature. I have open mouth syndrome too. Every time I do my bottom lash line or I do my mascara, I'm like. I'm gonna lightly fill in my eyebrows using the Nude Sticks uh, Eyebrow Stylus. And this is in the shade Brown. I love these because they come with the gel on the opposite side. And my brows are already nicely defined, so they just need to be lightly filled in. I'm gonna go ahead, the way that I fill in my brows, I like to start at the edge and lightly line it over top of where I applied that concealer. So what that does is it further defines it even more because I love a defined brow. like so right and then i go in in the direction of the hair growth and very lightly because these pencils are very pigmented you don't need to apply a lot of pressure otherwise you will end up with a sharpie brow like most products it's all about self-control then i like to take a spoolie this is the Moda Brushes comb. This is the brow comb. Use a brow comb. Just to ensure that that product is evenly dispersed. Yeah, it's a nice polished brow. So see, doing that technique of applying the concealer before the eyebrows for me, it just really, really helps to control things and ensure that you're not using too much. Most of the dimension too in your brows, you might just wanna focus on the arch. If you have a pretty full um, brow in the front, just very lightly, and I mean very lightly, go upwards in the direction of the hair growth, and that'll just mimic hair-like strokes. and make the brow look full, but still natural. And I always take my brow brush and just lightly diffuse that out. To ensure everything's nice and even, you know? And then I just assess in my bigger mirror and just take a look at if there are any um, spots that I may want to go back into with my concealer just to clean her up a bit and just to give my brows a little bit more finesse. And I like to layer this on. It just brings my hair back to life, you know? It just, sometimes the product um, can kind of hide your hair. So this just brings that hair back to life. Hey, she's here, she's front and center. Yes, there's product, but we also have hair. So go ahead, go like this to me. I'ma still have hair in my brows, okay? Take me swimming. They're waterproof, by the way, so they probably gonna stay on these brow pencils. Um, but yes, now that my brow is on, I'm gonna put some glue on my lashes. The lashes I'm gonna use today are the INV by Kiss 3D Collection Lashes. These are the number, the styles 110. I'm gonna go ahead and apply the INV glue. I'm gonna use the super stronghold glue. She does have a pretty good stronghold. I'm not mad at her. 
while the glue is drying down, you wanna make sure that you are um, keeping busy by doing something like applying your mascara to really give her time to dry down. And the mascara I'm gonna use today is from Stila. It's the Stila uh, Magnum X, Magnum Triple X mascara. She got a Magnum Triple X uh, <laughs> applicator. And this is what's gonna help us uh, apply our mascara with a lot of volume because she does get volume and that's what I love. I love a voluminous mascara. Wow, this is what every mascara wants to be but isn't. <laughs> no shade to any other mascara. But this is, the, I have, it's been a long time since I tried a mascara that made me be like, wow. Like that's wow without a lash. Like if I didn't have the time and I had to run out the house, I wouldn't feel bald walking out with just these lashes. But oh no, I still need my lash. While my lash glue continues to dry down, cause 30 seconds ain't enough, I don't care what anybody says. I do love a mascara primer for my bottom lash line because my bottom lashes are non-existent. So this Marc Jacobs primer is amazing. While my lashes are drying down, I just go ahead and pop this mascara primer on my bottom lashes just to make them a little bit more visible. So it's like, hey, I'm here, you know? Cause my bottom lashes, I always make such a mess, especially those of us who don't have a lot of um, hairs down there. It um, can make it difficult for you to apply your mascara, especially when you're using a mascara like the Stila Triple X Magnum, which is amazing for, you know, volume and drama, but for the bottom lash line, might be a little intense. Bottom lashes before, <laughs> they, not, they, they weren't there, but now my bottom lashes have entered the chat and we're good. So I let that dry down for a little bit while I apply my actual lashes. And the reason why I let it dry down is because if you find, a lot of people don't feel like mascara primers are effective because they use it, they apply the mascara right after and it just kind of gunks up with the mascara. That shouldn't happen. I like to let it sit for a second so that when I then go in with my mascara, it just, it's a little grittier and it grabs onto every lash and it's lit. So now I'm gonna put on my lash, my IMB 3D collection, number 110 lashes. Oh, well, the same guidelines, there's no rules. It's the same guidelines I was telling you guys that I follow for applying my shadow, as far as you know, having a mirror that gives you a little perspective, is the same rule I follow with my lashes because it makes it a lot easier for me to get a full view of my lash line, pop that lash in there as close to the um, lash line as possible. And the fact that I have no nails, I can just literally take it and press them in and press my natural lashes with the falsies. Now, I don't like um, for this step, especially if you're a beginner. This is the way that I learned how to apply them was by holding a mirror looking down. Because when I used to try to do this shit in front of the mirror child, I used to get mad at myself. My grandma come in, I'd be fighting with my damn self. She's like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, it's nothing personal. I'm just mad at the world right now. <laughs> Letting the glue dry down is uh, very, very, very important. Not dry down completely, but just a little bit because that's what's gonna make it a little tacky. And once you see that that glue is adhering, that's what's gonna make it easier for you to lay that um, lay that lash down. So take your time, you know what I'm saying? Ain't no rush with these. Um, next thing I'm gonna do is take my triple uh, XL mascara and apply it on my bottom lash line. And now because I've applied that mascara primer, it makes it very easy for me to apply this without making too much of a mess. And you actually see my non-existent lashes on my bottom lash line. Hello, they entered the chat. Please insert the aim sound when the door opens. <laughs> that would be hilarious.
now that my lash is on i'm gonna go ahead and take my okay. skin light highlight from revlon and it's gonna go in my inner corner this is usually always what i do um it used to be um Reezy, but then I got her and she looked just like Amrezy, so now I use her. And I save Amrezy for special occasions because she's limited edition and we don't know when we go see her again. I'm gonna pop this on my inner corner. Mm -hmm. The inner corner just, just completes everything. Yes, this is a flat shadow brush from NARS. We know she from NARS, why? Because she got a red bottom. <laughs> <laughs> All the NARS uh, brushes and red bottoms. Right? Look at you. Dennis is learning, you guys. If Dennis is learning, I hope you are too. I like to blend my inner corner highlight a little bit more up into the crease to really create that nice golden goddess effect. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes, you see that lit from within? Yes, 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 yes. I'm also gonna take a little bit more of this Skin Lights Highlight and put this directly on the brow bone. Mm-hmm, mm like so. After I do that, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of nose contour because I neglected my nose. I ain't given no nose contour. And for nose contour today, we're gonna use the Sunset Bronzer from NARS. This is Suntan, actually. And I love this color because it's too, too light for my regular contour, but she's perfect for my nose contour because nose contour is meant to be very soft not the same color as your contour on your face. Well, for me at least, I find that that can be a little intense. Whereas when I take this shade, which is a little lighter, you know, she helps me get in there and really create that dimension, but not in a way that like, you know, derails the entire operation. Taking my Real Techniques setting brush. Actually, no, I'ma use a smaller, this is a Morphe M. 441 blending brush because smaller tools are what's going to set us up for success so get used to using eyeshadow brushes for your nose contour because those are the way to go because mm -hmm. this is going to ensure that you still have that definition right but it's not going to completely take away the structure that you've built because that's the thing with contour and that's what makes it tricky is that you want to blend it out but you don't want to take it away completely right so like the same amount of pressure that I apply on my eyelids when I'm blending my shadow is the same amount of pressure that I'm applying here just cause I still want that structure. I just don't want the harsh lines. You feel me? Catch my drip. You pick up what I'm putting down. Okay. Now to finish up my complexion, I'm gonna go ahead with my Morphe uh, Continuous Setting Mist. Put that all over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I bathe. I love the mister on that. It's so good. You know, this is great. This is probably the best $16 I ever spent on a setting spray. Really, really good. Because she's not just, you know, a really nice, she's not just a really, <laughs> sorry. She's not just a really nice uh, mister. It's a beautiful formula that does set your makeup, you know? I love a luminous spray. They do have a luminous version of it too that I'm gonna spray later on because I'm extra y'all about, about to see. So when I've fanned the powder enough, right, to where she's, she's in there, I like to take my sponge and in these areas, I like to press that spray into my face. And that further gives the skin a really nice, and look, I haven't, y'all know I love a cream highlight. I haven't highlighted yet, but I just wanna show y'all the importance of all the steps we've taken so far and how they've contributed to what? A lit from within glow. That when we apply our highlight over top of that, child, it's gonna be effortless. And that's the thing, man. You gotta set yourself up for success so that you're working smarter, not harder. Feel me? Now, when I um, am done pressing that into my skin, 
and do it again. <laughs> Cause I'm redundant as fuck. The mister in this is really nice. It's different. Mm -hmm. It's different than the um, continuous setting mist because this is like an aerosol can and this is like, you know what I'm saying? But still such a fine mist. Wow. Setting sprays everywhere. Take notes. This is fabulous. And I like to use a luminous one to further add more luminosity on my skin. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, ooh, glow. I like to look glazed. Y'all already know. Now I'm gonna take my beauty blender and I'm gonna go in with my nude sticks. Where is she? I took, oh, she was hiding behind me. I'm like, where is my highlighter? This is the nude sticks, nudies glow in the shade, hey honey. This is uh, everything to me, like absolutely everything. It's, hold on, I feel like my lash is falling off. Nope, they're fine. But this highlight is everything to me. It's absolutely stunning. This is what I wear just all the time with makeup or no makeup because it looks like skin. And that's my thing with highlight. Powder highlighters, I'm really happy for y'all. I'ma let y'all finish. I say this all the time, but cream highlighters is where it's at. It just looks like skin, it looks, You see that on the camera? Mm -hmm. That's that's a highlight. That's a highlight. I don't care what you achieve this with, but that's a highlight. And what I mean by that's a highlight is, I mean, those patchy stripes of talcum filled highlighter. <laughs> They're not cute, you know what I'm saying? Highlight is supposed to enhance your skin's natural glow, you know? It's supposed to enhance those high points of your face. It's not supposed to look like a patch of fairy dust all along your cheekbone. Granted, like we said, everybody's different. I'm not here to tell you, I'm, there ain't no rules. You do whatever you, whatever the hell you want, but I'm telling you what I feel like is the most flattering. And for me, the most flattering is a cream because you can use it on all skin types. Uh, common question, how do you apply this cream on your skin without it lifting your foundation? It's a gel-based cream, so I'm never gonna have that issue, boo. Danessa Myricks has a dewy wet balm that's absolutely stunning that has a similar texture and consistency. Uh, Ciate London has a beautiful uh, stick highlight too that has a similar consistency like this. But this one is my absolute favorite because it literally has never failed me. I layer it and layer it and layer it as you can see. And that's what I love about it. I love a product that I can control and I have the option to say I'm good, I don't need no more. Rather than the product that I feel like, you know, I gotta take away. Taking away is very difficult. Building is very easy. And when you position this in just those key areas, cause that's the thing, highlight, people are so focused on highlight just on the cheekbone that they forget to highlight other areas. You don't realize when you highlight those high points of your face, not just your cheekbone, your brow bone, your inner corner highlighter with a little bit of powder, it brings everything together when you use a cream on your bridge of on uh, the top of the bridge of your nose and right at the tip of your nose i also like to do a little bit right up here it just brings everything together when it comes to the eyes i'm here for powder highlighters i don't have a problem putting powder highlighter on my um uh brow bone <laughs> But when it comes to highlight on the skin, I love something that looks like skin. I don't want to see where it begins and ends. I just want for my skin to move in the light and for that highlight to just gradually transition, you know, into, into, into that cheekbone and reflect in that light. People, I try this on people all the time and there are people that, you know, have their uh, ideologies and fixed ideas of what highlight should look like. And they're like, I don't see it. You know, it doesn't, it's not really impactful. I need y'all to understand something. Makeup is all about perspective. The highlight looks popping here in the mirror, right? But like, let's say I was walking outside and Dennis, you was across the street, right? The perspective of that highlight would be a lot more intense. That's what people don't realize, right? Sometimes you're standing there and you're looking at yourself in the mirror and it's not as intense. That's why you gotta take a step back, really feel it out, move your mirror, have a handheld mirror, you know what I'm saying? Cause you can't judge it based on just that. Cause trust me, child, the old ladies on the train, like, how you get your makeup to look so, like, satin? And I'm like, girl, let's sit down and have a conversation. I love older folk. I love talking to them. They just light up my soul. I'm like, yes, let's talk about hydration because the young folk don't want to listen to me. <laughs> okay. It works. Now I'm going to go in with my lip liner from the Beauty Supply. I was raised in Bushwick, Brooklyn, where Brooklyn at was good. And I was raised on beauty supplies, okay? Beauty supplies are the place to be 
for hair dye and also for lip liners and eyeliners and all these little things that you literally don't need to spend more than like five bucks on for like your kit or yourself and they're actually pretty good lip liners is one of those for me this is the kiss luxury lip liner in the shade roasted coffee this is from kiss she's a nice brown we love a brown liner I used to overline my lips so much, let me tell you, but I stopped doing that when I realized that I got a freaking small face. So, the hook I look like, giving myself a blowfish lip, and my lips are already full, you know what I'm saying? So, less is more. I just took that concealer to clean up that edge a little bit right there, because I'm not trying to go like super, I'm not trying to overline my lips, what I'm trying to say. I love a chocolate brown lip liner. I love, love, love a chocolate brown lip liner with a lipstick. It reminds me of the 90s. If I could live my early 20s in the 90s, ooh, when the, cause listen, I'm listening to the 90s R&B like it just came out. They tired of me in this house. I'll just be like, ooh, sweetie doo 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 you know what I'm saying, it's lip. <laughs> See, it reminds me of that, that's why I love a nude lip. And also, I just love a brown nude lip because there's so many variations of nude lips. You have your pink nudes, your mauve nudes. I love me a brown. Mm-hmm. After I apply that, I go in with the Morphe First Base Matte Lipstick. This First Base has been it. She's been the pale nude for me for like the past few months. I'm on my second one. Mm-hmm. Feel like J-Lo at the Super Bowl and can't nobody tell me nothing. Now one of my favorite lips to add to this is actually from the brand Lawless, an amazing vegan cruelty-free brand, all clean, all natural as Sephora. And this is in the shade Glaze, it's their lip gloss, their metallic lip gloss. Mm-hmm, because I love a gloss, especially when it's metallic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's giving it to me. She's cute, I like this. Okay, I'll take a little bit more of that Morphe Luminous Setting Spray because I'm extra. Mm -mm -mm. Just went on and put on my little bamboo earrings without putting on no blush. So I'm just, really quickly, I'm just, yes, cause blush, See, she just adds a little bit of sun. She gives us a little. Mm-hmm, this is pretty. There we go. Take my little beauty blender where she go. Just go back over with my highlight. Yes. And that's the finished look, y'all. What y'all what think? This is, this is what I like to call the classic dash. You know what I'm saying? The classic dash glow. People always ask, how do you achieve that? I hope that this answered those questions. Um, and if you have anything that you would like to see going forward, please let me know, okay? Let's start a conversation. Like I said, y'all know I love to talk. So um, please follow me on all platforms at Gotta Dash to stay updated with everything that's going on with Team Gotta Dash. And, um, oh, I'm just dropping things. And yeah, uh, I'ma holla at y'all because I'm hungry and I got a dash, so bye.